What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. If you've seen the other video that we made then you know that Battlefield 2042 is off to a very rough start. There's a lot of negativity being thrown around on all sorts of forums and if you've heard what Shane has had to say about it then you know that we are just woefully unimpressed with the game. However, if you're somebody who actually goes through Reddit forums and stuff like that, then you may have been recommended one particular Reddit post that I want to read to you today that I think perfectly sums up the problem with Battlefield 2042, at least as we know it right now. To say nothing of stability issues, to say nothing of server issues, blah blah blah, we're going to talk about this Reddit post real quick. So, I quote, fuck it. Here's a list of absolutely everything either removed or downgraded from previous games that is present in Battlefield 2042. <laughs> I'm seeing some people genuinely enjoying that game, and that's great. I want 2042 to be the best game it can be, but the sheer amount of shit that's either missing or just downright worse is outstanding. So is astounding, sorry. So here we go. Parentheses. For clarity, I'm talking about only the base game content, not Portal, although much of that list applies to both. He split it up into different sections, so first is core features. No single player story. No standard server browser. Fewer standardized game modes can't even play team deathmatch or smaller scale modes without relying on community servers. Fewer base game maps than any other title. Even including Portal, the map count is only 13. No persistent lobbies. Seriously, why do I have to matchmake after every round? Fewer in-game assignments. None outside of cosmetic unlocks. No class system. Less character customization options than Battlefield 5. No profile progress slash stats page in the menu. No battle log slash stats tracker for other players. No global leaderboards. No end of round assignment progress screen. No dog tags. No custom emblems. Fewer achievements, no medals, no swelling crescendo of dramatic music near the end of a match. Obviously, this is the most egregious of the list. I completely agree. Less destruction, only a small handful of destructible buildings on each map. No map altering levolution. That's sort of... There sort of is, but the maps are so big, anything that changes doesn't really affect how you play. No cross-game profile screen. BF, BF4, HL1, and V were all linked by a menu if you owned them digitally was a neat feature. No spectator mode. No permanent community servers would be useful for clans and events. In infantry gameplay, fewer guns, even including all the portal guns, BF4 still had more at launch. Metallic items you're carrying, keys, boost change. Holy shit! Fewer infantry gadgets, no manual leaning, no diving while swimming, no high wall vaulting, no crouch sprinting, no backwards prone, no explosion knockback, no rolling after falling from heights, no ammo or health pickup off teammates, no scope zeroing, no thermal optics, no indirect fire gadgets, less anti-tank launchers, come on man, only one. No lock-on launchers, no AP mines slash claymores, no static weapon emplacements, no fortification building, no supply stations, no suppression mechanic. This one I don't mind, but I am including everything. Is your head spinning yet? So moving on to vehicles. Fewer vehicle types and separate vehicle progression per faction, even though they are functionally identical. Why? No naval vehicles. No vehicle gunner direction indicator. No lock-on direction indicator. No vehicle enter-exit animations. <laughs> no tank turret decoupling. Less vehicle driver slash pilot customization options. No tank zoom customization options. No tank gunner customization options. No heli gunner secondary weapons. No separate heli fixed wing controls. No control input while looking behind slash free looking in aircraft. Scoring system. What are you doing? No squad wipe scoring, no player damage points, no vehicle damage points, no vehicle kill assist points, no headshot bonus, no long range kill bonus, no assist counts as kill bonus, no squad objective play bonus, 
Oversimplified team play scoring, i.e. healing a teammate always gives you plus 5 XP rather than the amount of health you give. The squad and teamwork section. No commander, no special squad call-in abilities, no squad field upgrades, no in-game VOIP. Fewer factions with almost nothing to give the two factions any distinction. No cross-team chat, no create new squad option, no promote to squad leader option, no clans, no view of squad mates while in the spawn screen, no medic incoming indicator in the down state. No rank name slash icons, just a number. Moving on to UI and quality of life. Less control customization options. Less UI customization options. No HUD slash icon opacity customization. No HUD scaling customization options. No gun sight reticle customization options. No network performance graph. No individual player scoreboard. Less detail of the who killed you screen. No ultra wide monitor support. Very poor friend joining system, no console aim assist, big fat fuck you to console players there, dice. Huh, <sighs> I'm out of breath. Not all of these points necessarily have a place in the game, but I just want to make it clear that 2042 could have been so much better in both quality of life and gameplay. The game really feels like it was hastily slapped together without any attempt to improve or innovate on past ideas, although like many of the core features were an afterthought, and the big selling points like tornadoes and the 128 player servers were so important that they forgot to flesh out the smaller details. Portal really is the saving grace, but it's a shame that we have to rely so heavily on user-created servers to fill in so many of the gaps missing from the base game, end quote. I did not play a ton of 2042. I played like maybe a combined six hours and noticed a fair amount of stuff felt like it was missing. I kind of chalked it up to the fact that like this is a trial and that it wasn't the full release, but the more and more that I've researched it, the more I've realized that like it's a trial. It's not a demo. This is the full game. You just only get to play it for a certain amount of time. You're locked behind a certain amount of hours to play it until the full release. But for all intents and purposes, this is the full game. And I gotta say, that is insulting. The fact that these several features, dozens of features, are entirely absent from a game that has relied so heavily on team play and vehicle play and like just these massive levolution destructible environments is frankly insulting to the player base. And I'm not gonna lie, it's very difficult for me to even give this game much credit for the few things that it does that are interesting. Like I remember talking to my friend about it on stream the other day, which I'll be editing a stream highlight here shortly. Be sure to go follow us on twitch.tv slash scoophash if you want to, we're over there, just saying. But I remember mentioning that on one hand, I found it interesting that one of the big things people were praising was how you can like, you know, you raise your gun up and you like customize it like in game, like in the moment instead of having to like go into menus and everything. But then you realize that exact same system already existed with the crisis games, both in multiplayer and out of it. And then you realize that crisis is an EA game. So they probably just cannibalized it from crisis. And that's why they didn't make it a really big marketing deal about it. And honestly, I think that's the best way to describe 2042 at this point in time. It's a cannibalized battlefield game. It takes a bunch of stuff from previous games, doesn't flesh them out, leaves behind all the stuff that made the game interesting, and then just tries to convince you that it's something new. It simultaneously feels like the most stripped down battlefield ever, and also feels like the most insulting battlefield ever. Like, it's for casual players, but it also just sucks to play. This is to say nothing of how unstable the game is. There are glitches everywhere. Servers constantly crash. Consoles literally refusing to run the game. Graphics cards just outright quitting halfway through a match. Just complete total system meltdowns over 2042's poor optimization. I really can't put in any more words how disappointing Battlefield 2042 is. For all the hype that it had and for how much and for how special of a place Battlefield holds in the hearts of so many gamers, this is such a bummer. But hey, that's all we got for you guys. Be sure to leave me a comment down below on how you're enjoying Battlefield 2042. If you are, did you play the trial? Did you not play the trial? We'd love to hear from you. Obviously, we have some very strong feelings about it, but we do hope that DICE does get their shit together and fixes this game at some point because this is pretty unacceptable. But nonetheless, guys, thanks for watching the video. Be sure to check out our other content. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media and Twitch and all that fun stuff. And I will talk to you next time.